This is Microsoft Designer. It's the latest AI art tool that allows you to generate images using AI. Microsoft have kind of tried to take a different approach. Unlike a mid journey, which requires you to jump into Discord or Adobe Firefly, which is just focused on generating AI art, Microsoft Designer have actually built a designing piece of software into the AI generation. This means that you almost have access to what is kind of like Figma or Photoshop. I was able to get access to the beta and I also have a one spare beta key, which I'm gonna give away in my Discord, something you can join in the link below. But otherwise, uh, let's begin and take a look. The trailer for it looks pretty cool. But what is it like in action? Here is my invitation. Finally, I can give this a go. If you do want to apply for the early access, you simply fill out the form that Microsoft provides on the landing page. So here's the dashboard for Microsoft Designer. On the left, I have a section where I can add in my own prompt. And on the right hand side, I have pre-made prompts that I can use. When I hover over any of the examples, it gives me the text used to generate it and I can click them to generate my own version. I can also upload an image from my phone or from my computer. Microsoft Designer then analyzes the images and the AI spits out different ways that it could be used. In this way, it works very different to Midjourney, which mainly just spits out AI art. So I do a lot of web design. I decided to give it a test to see if it could create a newsletter section where people could sign up their email addresses. What ended up coming out came out pretty quick. It was these designs over here. Some look like they're for Instagram, some for TikTok, but nothing particular for a website and its aspect ratio. I added a little bit more nuance to the prompt because currently most of the designs look very much like clip art you would normally see on a Word doc. What ended up coming back was more or less the same. I did get slightly better versions, like for example, there's a bookshelf on the top right, but nothing that really stood out. I kept plugging in the same prompt a few times to see if it would generate different types of outputs, and it did. It did end up giving me a few more examples of things like color theory with these little color palettes that you can see over here, but nothing that I would particularly use as part of a website just yet. After my third iteration, I decided to just pick one image to see what steps are next. I selected this middle one here, since I've got a dark theme for my website, and selected to customize the design. Here is the designer tool. In the middle is the design itself, which you can customize. On the right hand side are some alternatives which you can use, and on the left is the menu. At the top is a small nav bar which doesn't really do much. Now I wanted to have a look at some of the other ideas that are brought up, and most of these are pretty basic to be honest. I wasn't really impressed by any particular one. They kind of again look like clip art from Microsoft Word, but they do make it easy to select and then customize if you do want to pick any. In terms of the designer tool, the customization is quite easy. Click and drag to move most elements. They have a snap feature and I can resize them as well. So that's pretty good. In terms of the text, I can double click it and select to edit it. So if I wanted to customize this to say, sign up to the newsletter, that's pretty easily done. And then I can snap it back into the center position. I can also select and resize the frame, but that doesn't currently do much or even move or delete objects entirely as well. Each object, like this image for example, has different options, such as resizing it or changing its cropping. There is also the option at the top to do things like remove the background, where I think this image just might not use that very effectively, but it could be good for ones with people in there. You can also do things like effects, which on the left hand side, things like blurring the image or changing the color and saturation are also possible. Exploring the left hand menu, there are pre-made templates that look very much like like something you would use on Instagram. They aren't really related to this template here for signing up to a newsletter. So in this case, I don't think they would be very useful. There are visuals which I can use. So this one here is very close to a newsletter sign up and I could simply drag and drop it into the position, align it and have it replace the existing art. I can also change the colors for this design. I can have AI create inspired versions for the colors. I can add more visuals to it too. There are pre-made visuals depending on the category you're looking for, or you can even search through all the categories. I assume this uses AI to do so, and it gives me all sorts from symbols to clip art to stock photography, and even things that I can put on top of my title here, like this tag here that kind of looks interesting, like a streak of paint across it. 
And then I get very similar options to what I find in Microsoft's other products, like this layering system, where I can change the position of this object and move it back into the frame so that the text is above it. I don't currently see all my layers in here, so I'm guessing this is a bit of guesswork on the part of whoever's designing, but it does let me move objects into the frame. I can even move text in here. Right now, I don't want to move additional text in here, but I do have the option to have a look at different types of text I could use. And I could also select the current text that I have to have a look at suggested styling that I could use. I'm guessing this is just a kind of mix of styling depending on what's on the page already. And AI also can have a inspired styling where it selects a color and a font, but I didn't particularly like this option. So I decided to just go with this font called Blinker. Once the design's been made, there is a brand kit, which is almost like a style sheet for CSS, where you can have different fonts and colors be replaced in your current design based on whatever your brand essentially is. I did try a few of these and I didn't really like how they looked. Maybe it depends on the style and the brand that you have, but for this design aesthetic for this newsletter, they definitely did not mix. So I decided to revert and there are, well, what looks like unlimited undos to be able to do that, which is cool. Next, I wanted to take a look at downloading this artwork so I can actually use it inside of my website. When I select download, it does give me options here for MP4, GIF, PNG, JPG. I decided to start off with a simple JPEG and here I had a look at it and it comes out pretty much exactly what you get. There is a little bit of Microsoft branding on the bottom right here, but for the most part, it is identical. I also wanted to have a look at what this MP4 version looks like. I assume it's adding some animation to the content, which I think would be pretty cool, but often I'm not plugging MP4s into websites. Here is what I get. So it's animating in almost like a PowerPoint transition, but it's not something I would particularly use. Next, I wanted to try and export individual elements from the page so I could use on my own website design. Unfortunately, I found you can't particularly do this. As a stopgap, what I decided to try was to remove different elements from the page. So I only have the elements I want to export one by one and then downloading them as JPEGs so I could use inside of my website. I did this for the main background as well as the image. And then after that, I removed that and did the opposite by removing everything but that streak of paint next to the sign up to the newsletter. And this time I exported this as a PNG and I had the option to mark it as a background that is transparent and downloaded that. So that's just the one streak there. Now I want to put these elements onto the page I'm building and see how that works. I'm currently building a page on Editor X. It's a no coding platform and allows you to build websites without knowing how to code, which is cool. But if you do know how to code, you can do a lot more on there too. Let me see if I can plug this Microsoft Designer section into Editor X. I created a new section over here and I'm going to add in an element which will be an image. I'll upload the image that I exported from Microsoft Designer and I'll select to use that. I'll also want to add in the painting streak that I had earlier. So I might actually import one more image here that I'm going to place on top. I'll do some micro adjustments just to make sure that this more or less looks the same as it originally did in Microsoft Designer. And then I'll simply add some text here that says join the newsletter. For the most part, when you're building a design like this, it's quite easy to replicate from Microsoft Designer simply because the Microsoft Designer sites aren't that complex. You can then add in extra elements such as a button for the call to action or even build out the whole section here with a background that is similar to the original artwork. And so I think I have a pretty good idea of Microsoft Designer, its strengths and weaknesses. It's made for the general user, especially inside of things like business, where they need to build something simple, like a coffee shop Instagram post. This allows them to generate different types of styles, which they can select and then use. Using them is simple. You can just simply select and use the design and then customize it however you want, even if you don't really know how to use Photoshop. While it might not generate AI artwork to the caliber as things like Midjourney, it's simple enough for anyone to be able to just get something up and running, especially when you need to create designs for posts like on Instagram and Facebook, which it can do as well. It can redesign current existing designs to different aspect ratios and has all the popular options such as for Twitter and Instagram and many, many others. You can select one like a Facebook ad and in just a few seconds, you've got an ad 
ad for your coffee shop that you can post up on Facebook at any point in the right dimensions. And this applies the same for any other social media campaigns as well, whether it's a Twitter campaign or a LinkedIn campaign even if it is, for example, just to print out on an A4 piece of paper. As a web developer and designer, I probably wouldn't use this, but if I'm running a business and I have no idea what I'm doing, or if I'm from an older generation where I wanna plan a holiday trip to invite my friends, I can see how this could be useful to create that in just a few seconds, where you don't have to worry too much because the design is created for you. So I hope this gave you a good idea of Microsoft Designer, its strengths and weaknesses, and where it could be useful. If you haven't already, make sure you guys hit like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.